this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. All to whom all blessings flow, we give all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Oh, John chapter 20, verses 18. And it says, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. And I like to preach on the subject this morning. I got real evidence. I got real evidence. Let's pray. Our gracious, our eternal God, whom the earth and the fullness thereof belong, and all that dwells within. My gracious God, I want to just thank you for waking me up this morning and waking me up in my right mind on this Resurrection Sunday. Oh, my gracious God, I just ask you to hide me behind the cross and, and, and you come forward so that the people of God won't say, Reverend McCoy, you preach a good resurrection, a good Easter sermon this morning. But no, God, you showed up and you showed out today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. I got real evidence. My beloved, the celebration of the resurrection is never over in the life of the believer. The power and prominence and place of the risen Savior on the third day uh, should always live in the hearts of the followers of Jesus Christ. I want to make known the message of Jesus' third day resurrection the number three was Jesus' favorite number. And because the Jewish calendar in biblical days counted the first day from Thursday sundown to Friday sundown, it is of truth that Jesus rose from the dead on the third day morning. He got up on the third day to let us know that time is in God's hands. God does not operate according to chronos, which is man's time. Minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years. God's time is not regulated by clocks and calendars. God operates according to keros. God's time is not measured by minutes, but by moments. God's time is, oppor is the opportune time. Oh, there are seasons in God's time, not winter, summer, spring, and fall, but periods of overflow blessing seasons. If blessings are coming your way, my beloved, one after another, this is your season to be blessed. God made you a promise. You stood the test. He's going to open the windows and pour out a blessing it's your season to be blessed. Now, don't be surprised with the overflow blessing. This is your season. If things are not working out like you would want them, oh, just hold on. Be faithful. Your season is sure to come. I tell you, uh, this is my season, Deacon Curtis. After what I went through last year during this pandemic, this is my season to be blessed. Time is in God's hand, I tell you. My beloved, the word says that instead of always praying for delivering faith, which is based on chronos, uh, pray for sustaining faith, which, which is based on keros. Sustaining faith says, Lord, I know you are a praying answering God. I know you love me and care for me. I know you always want the best for me. So, so, oh, keep me, Lord, until you manifest your power in my life. Oh, Jesus got up on the third day that we might know it's not over yet. My beloved, don't be discouraged by the way things are. God made you a promise if you just believe. 
Things are going to get better, better for you. God's going to turn your circumstances around, I tell you. Oh, he majors in speaking life to dead situations. Not only is time in God's hand and it's not over yet, regardless of how dark, dim, and dreary it may look. But the resurrection of Jesus on the third day uh, assures us that God has got us. My beloved, God has got us. No matter what it is, God got us. My beloved, the resurrection story can be summed up in three words. Jesus is alive. My beloved, God's in, in, in initiative, his character, God's preeminence, God's providence, God's provision, God's protection, God's power, all manifested in the resurrection. And I stopped by this morning on Facebook and YouTube to serve notice to you that God has an expectation of us. God says, oh, I hold the regulation of time in my hands. I suspend the laws of nature and can bring back to life whatever is dead. I got your back. Oh, no weapon form against you shall prosper. You are an overcomer. I have taken the initiative. I need your response. Oh, my beloved, in the text, in the text, Jesus has risen on the third day with feelings of dejection, disheartenment, despondency, and despair. The disciples left the tomb. Some of the women tarried, but they all soon departed and returned to their home. Uh, the Bible says in verse 1 of the 20th chapter, Deacon Curtis, that early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and discovered that the tomb was empty and Jesus was gone. Oh, Mary Magdalene, uh, you will remember that Mary Magdalene was a woman from when Jesus cast seven demons in Luke 8 and 2. Her love and loyalty to Jesus the Christ were undeniable. After her conversation, she followed Jesus throughout uh, his ministry. And she was uh, there throughout the events leading up to his crucifixion. She was present at the mock trial of Jesus. She heard upon his pilot pronounce the death sentence. She saw Jesus beaten and humiliated by the crowd. She stood by every step of the way. She was Jesus' closest female friend. Because of her love and loyalty to Jesus, it, it was Mary Magdalene who got up early Sunday morning and went to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. Now, 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 if, if it's of note, my beloved, that Mary Magdalene was the first person to see the risen Christ, the first person, not Peter, not James or John, but Mary Magdalene, not Andrew, Nathaniel, or Judas, but Mary Magdalene, not Matthew, Thaddeus, or his brother James, but Mary Magdalene, not Philip, not Thomas or Simon, but Mary Magdalene. Oh, my beloved, all four Gospels uh, agreed that Mary Magdalene stood by the Savior of the world. Jesus had called the evil spirit out of her. Jesus had fixed her heart. He regulated her mind. She had turned her life around. She owed everything about who she was. Oh, and who she would become to Jesus. She owed everything to Jesus. Oh, my beloved, some of you may know how Mary Magdalene felt. Uh, some of you have a then and now story. You were one way then, oh, but look at you now. You were blind then, but now you see. Lost then, but now you are found. Oh, of the world then, 
but now you in the world, but not of the world. And sometimes people like to remember and remind you of your den. But when they do, oh, Deacon Curtis, hurry to tell them that that was then, but this is now. Now I've been born again. Now I have new directions. Now I'm walking in my purpose. Now my steps are ordered all by the word. Now I'm in his hands. He's mine. Now I got a brand new walk and a brand new talk. Oh, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Oh, Jesus uh, turned Mary Magdalene's life around. And she followed Jesus everywhere he went. And when Jesus arose on the third day, she was the first person to whom he revealed himself. And when she saw Jesus, she went running back to town saying, I seen him. I got some evidence. I seen him. I got some evidence. It's a fact. I got some evidence. It's true. He's alive. He's alive. I got some evidence. Oh, with excitement, jumping up and down with joy. I got some evidence. I, I have met him. I seen him. I seen Jesus. Well, this brings me to the first point of the text. There is evidence verifying the death of Jesus. My beloved, if we were called to witness, stand the enemies of Jesus, they would all testify, yes, he died. The Roman soldiers came to break the legs of the suffering prisoners on the third cross. Uh, uh, John 19.33 says, but when they came to Jesus, he was dead already. The Roman government would say, yes, he's dead. We had the governor's seal placed on the grave. The Roman guards who were placed around the tomb to keep anyone from stealing the body of Jesus would say, yes, he died. The friends of Jesus would all testify, yes, he died. Nicodemus would say, I was the undertaker. I begged for his body. I wanted to give him a decent funeral. I signed the death certificate. Yes, he died. Joseph would say, I gave him my tomb that I had hewed out of a rock for myself. Yes, he died. The other women who, who stayed around the cross to verify uh, the end will testify. Yes, he died. We were there when he gave his last words on the cross. Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. He gave up the ghost and he died. The enemies testified that he died. His friends testified that he died. If, if we were to call nature, Deacon Curtis, nature would testify, yes, he died. The son would say, I had to close my eyes at noonday because two sons, the S-U-N and the S-O-N, could not hang between the heavens and the earth at the same time. I refuse to shine. The moon would say, yes, he died. His death gave me a judgment hemorrhage and I ran down in blood. The twinkling stars in the stillness of the night would say, yes, he died. When he died, we closed our sparkling eyes, left our, our slippery sockets, and hid ourselves in the darkness. The veil in the temple would say, yes, he died. When he died, the middle wall was broken down. All evidence would say, he died. And this brings me to the second point of the text this morning. There is evidence verifying the burial of Jesus. Joseph, who testified that he died, will also testify that he took Jesus down from the cross and buried him in the tomb. 
the Roman soldiers who testified of his death can give evidence that he was buried. And as they stood around the tomb and protected his body, he was buried in Joseph's tomb. Not only that, but dead believers, Deacon Curtis, would give evidence of his burial. The dead would say, yes, he was buried in the grave. He was laid in the grave just as we are. We were prisoners to the grave with no hope of salvation. And when they buried Jesus during those three days, he was buried. He preached to us. He preached to us from the grave. Uh, we had been building the grave population, population since Cain killed Abel. And for us, there was no resurrection. There was no eternal life. We had no life after death. Oh, the path to the grave before Jesus was buried was one way, a dead end street. But, but when they buried Jesus, Jesus preached to us the plan of salvation. He told us about a highway to heaven. Every believing prisoner of the grave could be set free. We died before the promise. We died before he died. We were buried before he was buried, but he preached to us. <laughs> we heard the word and believe. He was buried in the grave so he could preach to us that we might live. Oh, Deacon Curtis now, this brings me to the third and final point of the text this morning. There is evidence that he died. There is evidence that he was buried. And finally, the question for us this morning is where is the evidence that he lives? We know that he died. We have evidence that he was buried. But how do we know that he lives? My beloved, I believe that more now than ever, God needs for believers to be witness that he lives. In this day, people don't care about what church or denomination you belong to. They don't care about discipline and doctrines. They can care less about whether your parents or your grandparents were AME, Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, or whatever. In this day, people want to know what the Lord has done for you? Or what has the Lord done in, for you in your life? Not your mama's life, not your daddy's life, but what has the Lord done in your life? My beloved, do you have evidence that the Lord lives in your life? Has he put food on your table? Has he kept a roof above your head? Do you know anything about being laid off from your job? Days turn into weeks and weeks turn into months. And while you was in between jobs, your mortgage uh, got behind. Your rent was two months overdue. Your car was about or was repossessed it. Your electric and your gas was about to be cut off. But uh, through it all, the Lord kept you. There's evidence. Automobile accident, unfavorable doctor report, death of a loved one. Your world was about to cave in. Oh, Mary Magdalene went running to tell everybody, I got evidence he lives. Oh, my beloved, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out. Well, I got to get out of here now. But uh, if you don't mind, if you got some evidence that he lives, you may want to tell somebody 
because they might need to know it. They may, might need some evidence that he is able. They might need to know some evidence that he's a bridge over troubled waters. He's a doctor in a sick room. He's a friend that's sticking to the end. He's a God that watches over me while I slumber and sleep. He's a healer of all sickness and disease. He's a merciful God, I tell you. He's a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in a storm. He would never leave you alone. Oh, I got some evidence. Because on Friday, <laughs> I said on Friday, they nailed him to the cross. On Saturday, they laid him in the tomb. But that's not how the story ends. Early, <laughs> early, early Sunday morning, he got up. He got up out of the grave. Not only did he get up, he got up with all power. A-L-L. All power, all power, all power in his hands. He got up with all power in his hands. I got some evidence. I got some evidence. Oh, God bless you today. God bless you. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior on this Resurrection Sunday, you can get to know him. All you got to do is believe in your heart that he died on the cross. Believe that he arose on the third day. And the Bible says, you shall be saved. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. We're now going into the next phase of our service today, and that is Holy Communion. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 34, 23 through 34 says, For I have received the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord death till he comes. Oh, God bless you. Let's pray. Our gracious, our eternal God, whom the earth belongs and all that dwells within. My gracious God, I thank you this morning for your word. God, I just pray that this resurrection word touch somebody this morning. God, I'm so sorry, God. I'm so sorry that they did you like they did you. But God, if they didn't do what they did, we wouldn't be here. We would all be sinners and head to hell. But I thank you, God. I thank you for laying your life down. Nobody laid it down, but you laid your life down for us. And I thank you. God, somebody right now on this Resurrection Sunday, 
Somebody right now God is going through. Somebody needs you. Somebody is struggling right now with this coronavirus. Somebody is struggling right now with a job. Somebody is struggling with family problems. Somebody is struggling right now, God. And God, they need you now more than ever. So I just ask you, God, let your will be done in their life. Your will, not man's will, your will. God, just touch them right now. Touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Touch them, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. God loves the cheerful giver. As stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, if this church has been a blessing to you and God has placed in your heart a desire to give, here are a few different ways for you to do so. First, you can go to the church website at sightmarkbaptist.org. Click on the donations tab at the top and follow the prompts. You will be directed to our donations page, which will give you the options to donate by debit card or PayPal account. Secondly, you can visit us in person at 4118 State Highway 34 East. That's Ridgeway, South Carolina. Someone will be available Tuesday through Fridays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Due to COVID-19, we are practicing all social distancing guidelines, which includes the wearing of masks and other face coverings. Please abide by these guidelines along with us. Thirdly, you may mail your offering in to the church. Address it to St. Mark Baptist Church, 4118 State Highway 34 East. That's Ridgeway, South Carolina, 29130. Thank you in advance for your support of St. Mark Baptist Church. God bless you.